Peace and blessings, y'all, on this corner of Boston 24. Good evening, good evening. How's everyone doing this evening? Hope everybody's doing well. I'm doing pretty good on, my side, on this side. And as always, God is great. God is good, and I can't complain. So, we know that Bud Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. are not fighting. Definitely not this year. They may fight early next year. They're talking about January, February. We really don't know. Um, Bud Crawford said that Errol Spence didn't make himself available. He said that he agreed to everything that they asked him to do. And they still was procrastinating. And so it seemed like he had a backup plan. And his backup plan was to fight David Avenition, who's 29 and 3 with 17 KOs. Um, he lost to Mean Machine back in 2018 by knockout loss. He, he lost to Lamont Peterson. Um, he actually beat Shane Mosley in his last fight, but um, he's been on a win streak for the last six fights. So it's not the worst fight in the world. It may not be what we really want to see, not the best, but it is a decision, a business decision probably that um, Bud Crawford made where he's going to make a little bit of money fighting his hometown and keep himself busy at 35 years old. I guess he's, you know, we can't be mad at that, okay? Errol Spence is now responding, saying that now you see who was holding up the, Troy, the fight. I don't really know who was holding up the fight, and I just want to hear somebody say that Bud Crawford never agreed to the 65-35 because Bud Crawford said that's what he did. He agreed to 65-35 for the first fight, and he agreed to a shorter, the short end of the percentage for the second fight, right? And I haven't heard Floyd or Errol Spence say that that's not true. Errol Spence did respond and say that now you see who's holding up the fight. But I wanna know how he was holding up the fight. The fans wanna know and deserve to know how was Bud Crawford holding up the fight? Because he said he wanted to see the, the contract or the guaranteed money or what was on the table. I don't know, but I just want to know, did he agree to 65-35 or not? And I want to hear somebody say that he didn't. If somebody can show me that and to really say that, then I'll say, you know what, Bud wasn't real. But if he agreed to that and the fight still didn't happen, then that's kind of leaning more towards him that he's saying that Will Spence didn't make himself available and he told Al Heyman and Spence that he was going to fight this year regardless. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe Spence is telling the truth. Maybe he was holding up the fight. Maybe he didn't agree to 65-35, or maybe he agreed to it, but then he still was coming up with other excuses. We really don't know. But what we know is that the fight is not happening. He's fighting December 10th in his hometown of Omaha, Nebraska, and it's supposed to be on pay-per-view for $39.95. Now that leaves L. Spence with a decision of who he's going to fight. He has two mandatories that he has to fight if he's going to fight and stay as a welterweight. And the one, the one mandatory that he has is Jerome Boutinas, 29 0, 27 knockout, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, followed in trainer Bozy Enos, who has petitioned the IBF for Earl Spence to fight him. The other mandatory that he has is Emantis Danionis. The WBA regular champion and his team have petitioned Earl Spence, I mean the WBA organization, to fight him. And he has been waiting in line. He stepped aside for Ugas and Earl Spence to fight. And then he fought Utaev on the undercard, beat him. And then he was going to step aside for Crawford and Spence to fight. So now that that's not happened, he seems to have a lot of rights to the fight. So you got Boots, the IBF mandatory, and then you got Danny Jonas, the WBA. Now you got the WBC, which is Keith Thurman, and the mandatory, and him being the mandatory, which I don't know how that happened because he came off a loss to Manny Pacquiao, and then comes back after a layoff, 
a long layoff and he fights Mario Barrios who just come off a knockout loss to a lightweight Tank Davis. So I don't know how he got to the top of the WBC rankings, but he is there. But I was I read that the IBF supersedes the WBC as far as the selection process for mandatories. And so I don't know if the WBA supersedes the IBF, but I know it's they kind of work. They're like they lock step with each other, one and two. Right? So it's just a matter of who can be more convincing to their organizations to get that fight. I hope it's Boots that gets that fight. I don't think that that's a fight that Team Spence want. Matter of fact, I know they don't want that fight, but they may have to take it. Now, if he gets Danny Onis and then he gets to fight him, I think he will beat Danny Onis and then he'll probably move up to 154. And then Crawford, after fighting Avenition and probably beating him, he'll probably do the same thing. I don't think he's going to mess around with 154. I mean, 147, if Errol Spence moves up, I think he'll go up as well. They may fight at 154. Um, we got to see how this plays out. But I know if Crawford moves up and Spence moves up, we know who's taking over the welterweight division. That's Jerome Boutinas. We know that. And ain't nobody going to stop that train. Okay? So, if they stay at 147 and they fight early next year, and Boots is hopefully fighting for these years out in December. We got to see how that goes. So now, I don't know who Boots can fight. I doubt if Keith Thurman will take a fight with him. It'll be a miracle. But we will see. Somebody going to have to step, step to the plate. Somebody going to have to put their fear to the side and fight Boutinas. It is what it is, man. You're in the boxing game. If you're scared, then you need to retire and get up out of there. Because this ain't for them chunks. All right? So, we're going to see what happens, man. Spence got to make a decision, though, because this is October 23rd. And he's going to fight in November on a date. I heard some dates in December, the 14th and the 27th. Um, 27th is right after Christmas. I don't know about that. The 14th is uh, a week or so before. So, I don't know about that either. November might be better, but then he has to find a place to fight. And football season has started, so Dallas, Texas Stadium, mm -hmm. they would have to figure that out. You know, um, the dates, because then if he fights on Saturday, then they got to get the stadium ready for football on Sunday if they're playing a home game. So then they have to see when Dallas is playing away, the time frame, and everything like that. If he's going to fight in Vegas, they got to get a date at the MGM Grand. So all of that has to be worked out. So if he's going to make a decision to fight whomever he's going to fight, whether it be Boots or Stan Jonas, then that has to come quick. So it's going to be very interesting this week, the next couple of weeks, definitely. I would say definitely this week coming, a decision is going to have to be made before this month is out, what Earl Spence is going to do. We know what Boots, we know what Bud is doing. He's fighting David Avenation December 10th, reportedly, in Omaha, Nebraska, on pay-per-view for $39.95. So, <clears throat> pardon me. We're going to see how this plays out. All right? So that's all I got. Peace and blessings in this corner box from 24. Please subscribe to the page to please leave your comments. Everybody be safe.